Hey everyone, welcome to Rust Admin Academy. My name is SRT Bull. I'm here to teach you everything that you need to know about running a Rust server. One of my viewers recently asked me a question. His name is Charles J. Charles asked, could you do a video on how to install and run a second modded server on one local hosted machine? And of course, the simple answer to that is yes, of course I can. And this is that video. So assuming, of course, you've already set up your Rust server, you don't need to know everything that I'm about to do, but I am going to quickly blast through the exact processes required in order to set up one Rust server. I've obviously previously downloaded Steam CMD. I haven't installed anything yet. But this is what my folder structure looks like to start out with. And this is what I teach in all of my other previous videos that show you how to set up a Rust server. So I'm just going to quickly install Steam CMD. And once that's finished, we can already get started with setting up our Rust server. So of course, we do login anonymous. We of course allow any permissions that Steam CMD is asking us for. And then of course, force underscore install underscore DIR. And then we put in whatever directory we want our Rust server to actually reside in. And just a reminder at this point, you'll notice that none of my folder names have any spaces in their names. It's very important that you make sure that none of your folders have spaces in any of the folder titles. Now, a lot of people are getting really freaked out about this warning that keeps coming up when you tell Steam CMD where you actually want your Rust server to be installed. The warning says, please use force underscore install DIR before login. Don't worry about that right now. Just because it gives you this warning doesn't mean you have to do anything about it. I assume sometime in the future, yes, we're going to have to define the directory before we actually log in anonymously. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I honestly don't know why they're putting this warning there because this process works the exact same way. You can also do it the other way where you define the directory first and then log in anonymously. It still works. It does the exact same thing. So now, of course, we're ready to tell Steam CMD to go ahead and install all of our Rust files. So app underscore update space 258550. That 258550, that's just the Steam ID for Rust. It just tells Steam CMD which server you're actually setting up. And of course, depending on your internet speed, this might take a couple seconds, it might take a couple minutes, but I'm not gonna make you wait for this. I'm gonna edit this section out. While we're waiting for this to finish, I wanna tell you guys a couple of things. First of all, if this is the first time that you're setting up your Rust server, don't use this video as your tutorial. I'll put a link to a better video right here. It's a little bit more in depth. But for those of you that have no interest in watching how to set up a Rust server, I'm going to put a timestamp just to my left right here, telling you what timestamp to go to that actually gets into the section that we're actually talking about on this video, which is setting up multiple servers on one local host machine. And then once Steam CMD is actually done installing all of those files, of course, you can just type exit to close out of Steam CMD. Once that's finished, we can go into our Rust servers folder, and this is where all of those files have been now installed. Now, like I said before, for a lot of you, this is just recap stuff, and you don't have to actually pay attention to what I'm doing. But if this happens to be the first time you're watching how to install install a Rust server, you can certainly pay attention to this next section. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to create the files that are actually going to run our Rust servers. And as many of you already know, I like to use Notepad++ for all of my editing. So I've just created a really simple batch file here. There's nothing fancy. The one thing that you are going to notice if you're experienced with what we're talking about is I've actually taken out the update line. Normally at the very top of this, you would actually see the login anonymous force underscore blah, blah, blah. You would see all of this as part of the batch file. The reason for that is so that every time this server is booted up, it automatically runs that update. I go through all of this on my previous videos, so don't worry, that information is already out there. But because I just installed this instance of Rust on this computer, I know that it's already up to date, therefore I don't need to have that update line on my batch file. Plus, I'm going to be installing Oxide on these servers because there's a couple of important steps that I want you guys to recognize there as well. So I'm just going to take all of the information from this batch file and I'm going to put it into another file and pasta that in there, and then I'm going to do the same thing again. So we're going to end up with three operational batch files. But there's a couple of important things that we need to do in order to make this work. So let's go back to the first one there. This is the original batch file that I started. You'll notice that all of my ports are 28015, 28016, 28017. This is including the Rust Plus app port. So of course, on the second batch file, we want to go incrementally higher on our port numbers from what we did on the initial one. So as you can see here, I did 28018, 28019, 28020. And then, of course, we can go to our third instance and we can do the same thing there. 28021, 28022, and 28023. So incrementally higher in port number so that none of the batch files are trying to use the same port for multiple functions because that just won't work. We also have to do a little bit of changing on the names of them. So this one is called multi-test server number one. I'm going to change my second instance to multi-server number two. And we're going to take our third instance and obviously we're going to change that to number three just like that. Another important detail.
detail that we have to change at this point is the server identity. So we've got multi-server number one. Let's go to the second file. Let's change this to multi-server number two. And then we'll go to the third instance and we'll change this to multi-server number three. So now other than the port numbers, the server name, as well as the server identity, everything is exactly the same. So let's just go ahead and save these as batch files. Let's just make this really simple. Let's just call them server start one dot BAT. We'll go to the second one here. We'll do the same thing. We'll call this one server start two dot BAT. And then obviously the third one, we're going to call it server start three dot BAT. Now, if we go back to our folder, you can see that now we have these three different batch files here, each one of which is going to open up a different Rust server. And because I like to see the world implode, let's run all three of these all at the same time. And we'll just give this a couple of minutes. I'm not going to make you guys wait for it, but I'll show you once all three servers are up and running and I'll show you some changes that happened inside that folder once we get there. All right. And just like that, we've got three operational servers up and running. As you can see here, we've got multi-test server number one, multi-test server number two, and multi-test server number three. And if we go back to the file folder where everything is residing, you're going to see something changed here. Now, if we go into this server folder right here, you're going to see the server information for each one of those servers that's running. And this is going to become very important in a minute here when we're actually going to install Oxide. I'm going to show you the steps that happen, and then I'm going to show you how you can have three different servers running with different Oxide plugins for each one. I'll explain what I mean as we go along. All right, so for right now, we can just close out of all of these servers that we don't need these right now. All right, so let's bring up my downloads folder. I've already gone ahead and downloaded the latest version of Oxide from umod.org. So we're just going to extract this zipped file right to this location right here. We're going to go into this folder and you're going to find a file called rust dedicated underscore data. We just want to take this and drag and drop it into the file folder where our rust servers are. It's going to confirm if we want to replace certain files. And yes, of course we do. If this is the first time you're doing this, it's usually about 10 files. If this isn't the first time you're doing this, it's usually about 30 files that you're going to be replacing. Whatever it is, just click on replace the files at the destination. And now as soon as you boot up one of those servers, it doesn't matter which one, you're going to see that it looks very different from the way it did the first time you booted your server. It's also going to generate this folder right here called Oxide. This is where you would typically, if you were just doing a one server type of system, this is where you could manage all of your plugins, your config files, all that good stuff. However, that's not what we want to do in this particular instance, because maybe we want to have differing types of Rust servers using different configurations of plugins, using different configuration files. So we want each Rust server to have its own dedicated Oxide folder. And that's really simple to do. Let's just close out of this server here. Let's go back to each one of our batch files right here. And what we need to do is we need to define in the batch file where we want it to actually look for Oxide files. And of course, that's just another CVAR. You guys have probably have seen this before, but just in case you haven't, let's go through this again. So we're just going to add this CVAR to each one of our batch files. We have to make an important change here, but I'm just going to add the lines first to each one of the batch files. So now, as you can see here, Oxide directory, and then we're giving it a location where we want this batch file to be looking for the Oxide files. Obviously, this location doesn't make sense for our current example. So let's get the actual information that we need. So let's go into our Rust server folder. Let's go into server and we want to grab this address right here for multi-server number one. So let's just click on the address bar right there. We'll do control C to copy that to our clipboard. Go back to notepad plus plus. Make sure you're working on the right batch file. So that's server number one. And we're going to post in that new address right there. And we can do the same thing for multi-server number two. We're just going to copy that address. We're going to go over to batch file number two and we're going to replace this information right here. And as I'm sure you could have guessed, we're going to grab the same information for the third server go back to the batch file for the third server and change that information right there now we can save each one of these batch files so just before i go ahead with this and run those batch files i just noticed that i made a goof up i should have put a slash oxide at the end of each one of these to find that it actually goes into the oxide folder that it will automatically create so if you were copying me exactly step by step what i was just doing make sure you put a slash oxide at the end of it all right now that we have all of that information in there correctly we can go ahead and run each one of these batch files all right, there we go. So now we have all three servers up and running. And if we go back to the file folder where everything is residing and then go into the server folder, you're going to, of course, see the multi-server one, two, 
and three or whatever you called them in your batch file. And now if we go into one of these, you're gonna see there's a new folder in there called Oxide. And this is now where you would deal with the plugins, the configs, the data files for each one of those servers individually. And so just to show you that it's only gonna affect one server at each time, I just quickly downloaded Better Chat just as an example plugin. I'm gonna drag and drop this into my plugins folder for multi-server number one, and you're gonna see it load on multi-server number one and not on either one of the other two servers. Two and three won't load Better Chat. So there you go, Better Chat was compiled successfully and blah, 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 it doesn't matter. But you'll see here that it didn't happen on multi-server number two, and it didn't happen on multi-server number three. If you want it to be on two and three, of course you would just go into each individual server folder, so multi-server number two, Oxide, plugins, and we can post that in there. You should see it compile right up here. There you go, just like that. And we'll do the same thing for number three, just for argument's sake, Oxide, plugins, and we can post that in again. You should see it down here. There you go, Better Chat was compiled successfully. So that in a nutshell is how you run multiple servers out of one instance of Rust on your local host machine. So with the example that I'm showing you today, you could run one vanilla server, you could run one slightly modded server and one heavily modded server all out of one instance of Rust on your local host machine. All right, special shout out goes out to Charles J. Thank you so much for the great question. It gave me an opportunity to teach you guys something that I've been meaning to do for quite some time, like three years, and you finally gave me the reason to do it. So thank you so much. Remember, if you guys found this video helpful, the best way that you can help me out is by liking, commenting and sharing this video. And of course, if you haven't yet already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notification bells. And one more thing before you take off, if you've ever thought that we should be able to connect to the power lines that are already existing on our Rust server, then watch this video right here because this is a plugin that allows us to do exactly that. And another really cool plugin that I want you to go check out is Water Bases right up here. If you wanna build on water without having to dive down to the bottom of the ocean to build up your foundation up to the top of the surface, this plugin right here allows you to build right on the surface of the water. Thank you all so much for watching. Remember, I put out a brand new video every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So until next Friday, I hope you guys are staying safe and making good choices. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.